achievement already. Oh, I got achievement already. Um, the one where you just turn achievements on. <laughs> the end is never. Okay. Promising. The Stanley Parable. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't even know. I've not even looked up how to do anything on it, so I'm a complete noobism again. I thought the loading screen was part of the game then. <laughs> it's like, am I supposed to click something? This is the story of a man named Stanley. It's up to Max. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. This would be cool in VR. Okay, how do we interact with things? This is E. Alright. It is E. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Uh, Stanley's gonna look around first, though. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Ah, <laughs> that mug says who farted. <laughs> oh, okay. Give in, let's go to the meeting room. All the mugs say who farted. It's less enjoyable now. It's not original anymore. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, he didn't. 
This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. It's up to max, so I can't turn it up any louder, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know how to change the settings. Okay guys, uh, which door shall I take? <laughs> or shall I just play? Uh, hang on. Properties for sound settings. Uh, yeah, there's literally nothing in the settings. It's up to Max, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. I don't like the dark room. What's in this one? Oh, it looks like a dead end. Oh, no, it's not. Hmm. Okay, we're taking the other door. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. No, he didn't. He went down an elevator. <laughs> Please tell me the intention of this game is to irritate the uh, uh, narrator. <laughs> but Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now, in order to get back, he needed to go um from here. It's um left. But I want to go right. Fine. Oh no, no, oh. it's to the right, my mistake. Well, that's how I wanted to go anyway. <laughs> no, 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 not the right. I don't like that. Why it's would like I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly. Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yeah. yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely, this way. Oh. Okay. Alright. Oh no, my god. No! No, 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 This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 we just, we just have to get back to, um, oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. Oh. How about, rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? No. Okay, from the top. Oh, okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Are any different doors going to be open? Oh my god, I've got no legs. When Stanley... Wait, wait, what? No, I... No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely <laughs> restarted the game over, completely fresh. Everything should be... Well, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere, or... A... Hold on. Hey, well, I didn't Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. 
I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay then, it's an adventure. Come Stanley, let's find the story. Oh god, so many doors. I want to go down the one I can't get in. Uh, this one. Haha. -ha. Everyone knows what you did, they're just holding back to let you talk to yourself. <laughs> I need that sign in my house. I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just... do we need to restart the game again? No, well, I find I'm it unlikely that we'll ever progress now. by starting over and over again. But it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? What the hell? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? All right, kid. Let's go. Spilled coffee. Um, we could smash one of these windows open. Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait, never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Oh, no. Someone's definitely going to stab me. <laughs> now this... Well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Or do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Yay! Congratulations! <laughs> I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off. So, good job. <laughs> I win, oh, guys. No. no, I don't feel right Aww. about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. <laughs> that makes what, four restarts? I definitely do need cake. I agree. All right, <laughs> I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Well, well, well. I think I can manage that. Although I'm not sure. I might see an open door. Aha! Oh, it's all there. Here. You see, the line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, 
Are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. I think the narrator's Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. Cut the music, go back, and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. Okay. Weird flax. Oh. Wait, what? We're back at the office? No. <coughs> No, no, line. You do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? I mean, we're into an office we weren't in before. <laughs> oh, no, 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 not again, line. How could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you. Well, oh, I can't take uh, this anymore. It looks to hell fantastic. with it. Restart our <laughs> time. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? I don't like Why can't we make up our me. own story? <laughs> Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Okay, sure. Now. Yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. How do you knock? <laughs> Nothing's happening. <laughs> I just keep going. Are you guys getting me to knock on a door for no particular reason? <laughs> you guys are taking advantage of me. Oh my god, it's... Oh my god! No. 
Oh, no, not you again. <coughs> Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. <laughs> Just like all life's problems. <laughs> It goes. <laughs> Oof. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. <laughs> in fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Um. Okay. So I know that each door has to lead somewhere. Which means that somewhere, the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. <laughs> and that, in turn, means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny. He's completely awaits. lost me. <laughs> okay, cool. What? What? Oh, hold up. What's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game what, eight, eight times? That's really how all this goes? It's all he is determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing. Wall. The writer forgets about the previous well, restarts. Who Stanley consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? <laughs> Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really... No, it can't be. I, d I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't I like restart the game. The I won't restart. do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And the time return stopped? Does that mean... Um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. <sighs> I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime... What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder how long it would take me to die. Okay. The narrator is gone. All of his co-workers oh, were no, gone. What? Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? <laughs> Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. <laughs> I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Four. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. <laughs> I've lost count. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has thanks, to be a, a true Sir, reward for valiant Lily. effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? 
Can I even get to 417? Oh, I'm on the desk. Alright then. Uh, oh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Oh, great! Now, go click a few times on door 437. That wasn't 20! Wait, what door is for the achievement? Four thirty. Okay. Am I really just gonna stand there and click it that many times? <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> this is top quality content right here. This is what you guys came for. What? What? <laughs> Wait, no, because it recognised this door. Oh, fuck it. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Sure. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. The future was yesterday, tomorrow is now. I'm loving the accuracy in the game. Like, that is legit how uh, the projector would be projecting. Is there an ideas bin in here? No. Room closet. Chris is in here. But Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. No, he didn't. He checked out items. Because there must be something in here if you can open the broom closet. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom <laughs> closet. No reason to still be here. Oh my god, I can crouch. I hadn't even tried. 
Oh no, I can't. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. <laughs> he wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing, doing sweet, sweet FA. FA. <laughs> I love it. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But I kind of want to go downstairs. Ooh, basement looks scary. There was definitely someone living here. And a lot of... Where's the bird poo come from? Like, there's nothing up there. Thanks for the follow, Luke. But Stanley just couldn't do it. <laughs> he considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, this he began to make other himself. strange observations. Okay. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Yeah, I've already why covered that. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley so felt messy. to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above oh, the no. ground. Oh, no. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it, too, appeared. It was so much fun. This and nice. Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating <laughs> everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me Thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. Oh my god, this and while is he a thought mind it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. 
Everything will be fine. I mean, if you have to say you're normal, I, am I feel like you're not. Okay. <laughs> We're still here. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh. Okay. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. I'm sorry, what? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. What? scheduled either by you or a person in your place of work. The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. <laughs> if at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, please terminate it immediately and cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Thank you, and have a pleasant day. It's weird you can't terminate that message. <laughs> I see something different now. I like a work. I just hate my boss. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Mm. <laughs> Bring back seat. Yet there was not a single person here either. Tips for not Feeling a wave of disbelief. <laughs> Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh no, oh no, 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 not again, <laughs> I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. Don't leave. <laughs> yeah, this is the content, guys. I can't, I can't jump. And the 
world's saddest midget. <laughs> I can't even glitch onto anything. Oh, I just opened closed the door on myself. Jump from the map. You can't climb it. It's not an object. Learn how to jump, okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, this is lavish. Bloody hell. Executive? Oh, I can't go to the bathroom. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? <laughs> Check this. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, Four, five. Someone put that in the chat. But of course, <laughs> Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Two, eight, four, five. I will forget. Thank you. Okay. Oh, that's the key fan. Two, eight, four, five. No! Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. No, trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was Five. two eight. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh, Yeah, down to hell I do go. <laughs> Satan, I'm home. <laughs> Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt sickness. more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Oh god. Guys, freezing temperatures. <laughs> I know it'd be a scary game. Ghost of a freezing temps. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Ooh, or do I go escape? Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. I mean, I'm all down for violent death. But does the corridor just keep going? Do I the door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. How old are you? Where are you? At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward yes. and willingly confront his death. <gasps> it's beautiful. Do I do it, guys? Do I do it? <laughs> Yeet! <laughs> Do a flip. I wish I could, but I can't fucking jump. <laughs> oh my god, this is a freaking record. I've got eight viewers. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wait, what? 
As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. You've just deleted us. What? Farewell, Stanley cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral oh, instant, achievement. Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. I mean, I'm not going to care. Oh, what? I didn't want to live. <laughs> what did I get? The Stanley Parable. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his no. office as alive <laughs> as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Oh. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Well, this is, this is cute. Okay. Count down. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Keep streaming. You know this. supposed to be doing. I need this many screens. She can read. Thanks. Thanks, Faith. Yeah, 
I would probably poop myself. What is the difference between a duck? Please poop your- no! understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Woo! I want the freedom ending. Oh, we're back here. Oh, exit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. I wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. And push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, and it'll be your only true choice. I want that. Do choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time Yay. I mean, does anything happen now? <laughs> this is death. This is the great content you guys came for. What do I do? Just let it, let it go. <laughs> Sorry, KG Chaos. <laughs> making clicking noises. I got nothing. <laughs> wow. Is this one of the endings? If I just... I wanted sweet, sweet freedom. Aww. Oh my god, 10 viewers. Oh, hi guys. Uh, okay. Let's begin the game again then. different. Oh, okay. 
Okay, it did want me to restart. Thank you. Is Satan back now? Yes, Katie, you're here. You're Satan. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Mm. Sorry, I'm eating a KFC. <laughs> well, I'm eating the chips. Because I'm hungry. You have to put daddy in the chat. <laughs> Press all of the buttons. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, oh, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I mean, I. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Won't let me back in the broom closet. <laughs> Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs uh, to his boss's office. I'm not gonna do any cheats because I've never played before. Can we do it this one? <gasps> yes, we can. Oh, panda! Oh no, there's a gun. Oh, okay. I saw the panda before the gun. That is not. That's not cute. Ooh, elevator. There's a lot of paper around. They're not very uh, clean, are they? Wait, how long is this elevator ride? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered. Uh, Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single <laughs> minute to just let the narrator talk. I'm sorry, that narrator. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Thick, thick. Six, nine, six, nine. <laughs> Wow, this is anxiety inducing. <laughs> Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Oh, I wanted to fall down the hole. Again, never a good sign, wouldn't it? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Okay, fine. Stop it. Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television oh, screens. We were up there what horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. 
Did he have the strength to find out? Yes, he did. Now the monitors jump to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this but very I place. Be, and as the cold be. reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. Or I for just he it would dismantle the controls once and for all. I will smash that button for serotonin, please. Mind controls idle, awaiting input. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. I mean, is it my obligation? Is it? I mean, I kind of want to see what happens if I give myself more serotonin. So, I'm going to turn it on. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? Yes, After I did. After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much <laughs> better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, Boss two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. I don't You're going to die doing. anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. 
Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh, that's oh dear cool. me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? Won? Solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment, but here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless, to see you made humble. This is not a challenge, it's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. I don't Just you do. being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment <laughs> I say happily ever up. Alright, guess we're back to the loop. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started, and if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he'd come into a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Uh, that was nothing, wasn't it? Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. Oh. Okay, cool, he's gonna open it for me. <laughs> cool. Alrighty then. He's getting a bit sassy now, isn't he? As the old narrator. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. I've got room for this whole rigmarole again. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Thank you. 
Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. To the first button. I've already passed the elevator. Now. Oh, I can't go back. Sorry. Oh, this one. Oh, but you can't go back, it shuts all the gates. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Okay. spot before and just says fired in red. <laughs> oh refused to believe it. <laughs> he so couldn't colors. accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. So, one shelf two And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. I'm gonna turn it off. 
Uh, I liked the other ending. blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty was it over yes he had won Yay. he had defeated the machine unshackled himself from someone else's command freedom was mere moments away and yet <laughs> Just even Minecraft. as the immense door slowly opened Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him, for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. Oh, that's nice. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped <laughs> through the open door. Do I? Or do I go back? <laughs> Stanley felt the cool breeze wow. upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And, and Stanley by was happy. Oh. Yay, achievement! What? The end is never. <laughs> so what is that? It you just find the different endings. A soft game. wind blew outside, and perhaps rain started. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. We did everything that none of it told us to do. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm suspicious. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, <laughs> Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I'm not doing any cheats. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, and the doorway's already open. Here's the door, just go. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. I mean, we love a bit of violent death, don't we guys? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Ready? <laughs> Yeet. How didn't I break my leg? 
As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief yeah, and shallow no life. Farewell, Stanley. Yay, squish. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Farewell, oh, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, <laughs> killing him instantly. Really? We're here again? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? All right, guys, have we explored When all every path endings? you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. I'm not sure she said that before. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let... Uh, time choose... <laughs> Alright guys, well I'm going to eat my KFC um, Thank you for watching And I will be back next Saturday at 3pm With I don't know what yet um, So yeah Bye